So let's just um, take one step back. Uh, I've been talking about these grooves. These U grooves here, these did not form during atmospheric re-entry, but they are related to atmospheric re-entry. They are cracks that form during atmospheric re-entry, but the cracks have been etched and enhanced. Originally, these were paper thin cracks, but when, when, when it's etched by water flowing through the uh, gravels that these are found in, it, the, the, um, the, the surface is removed and it always attacks features, so the anterior is always preferentially attacked along these cracks. Now, the, the um, waters that flow through, well, let's take a step back. Tektites are almost always found in reworked gravel deposits. They've probably been moved, deposited in a gravel, um, sea level changes, it gets, um, it gets um, incorporated into a river again, transported, deposited in another gravel, probably several times before we find it today. But tektites are sorted into coarser sized gravel fractions and that's what they're found in, that's what they're concentrated in. Gravels are highly porous, highly permeable, a lot of water flowing through them. This etches the tektite glass is very slightly soluble. Um, I've been told that pH isn't important. I still feel pH is a factor. I think that in slightly more acidic waters etching is more prevalent. When you find tektites in the deep oceans, and some of the tektites in the deep oceans, especially in larger forms, they've actually been kept on the surface of the um, sediment, and yet you still get very delicate flange forms. So in salt water, Tektites appear to be relatively stable, but in fresh water, um, they, they don't seem to be that stable. They seem to be quite soluble. Um, when we go to some places, I've got a couple of localities, Davao and Sipale, uh in the Philippines, where we found um, specimens, cores, these two cores, not perfectly spherical, but you get the idea anyway. That's the anterior. This is the posterior, smooth posterior, so we can work out the original sphericity of the body. But there's no U-grooves. There are very paper-thin cracks, maybe half a millimetre or less, if you can even see them sometimes, and you get the navels, the spherical cracks. So um, these navels have probably been formed related to uh, um, uh, the fracturing of the material off of the uh, and spalling of the material off of the front of the tektite. Um, but these little paper thin cracks, they're not really well developed in these. These are pretty fresh. These haven't really been etched. Now I don't know why. Maybe these have been incorporated in a um, in a clay stone or something instead of a gravel. They just seem a lot, lot fresher. But no U-grooves. These U-grooves form later on. The little cracks these form during atmospheric pas passage. The U-grooves then attack these cracks, dissolve the uh, silica, the glass, and then you get these U-grooves. As a um, subset of Philippine tektites, you get ander-type sculpture. Ander-type sculpture occurs on all tektites, all known tektites. Um, it originally got its name from a place in a place called Anda in Pangasinan, which is in Luzon, North Philippines. Um, here you get a lot of this Anda type sculpture. Anda type sculpture is not the U grooves, it's the V grooves. And these V grooves often have a radiating pattern, kind of coral like texture, often very attractive to the eye, often command a uh, higher price. Um, so these, these, this is an example, this is heavily etched actually, and this is another fine example of ander type sculpture. And here we've got very early stages of ander type sculpture. Um, almost some of them you call them bird's crow um, or bird's feet. Um, 
because they kind of look like that. They start by radiating out like that. And, and it's just the, related to the tension of the surface and also probably the fact that tectite's cooled from the outside in. And this creates a kind of radiating pattern from the outside going in. And um, this is what's chemically attacked. Um, tectites are not entirely homogenous. There are areas that are higher in silica and areas of glass which are lower in silica. The areas of glass that are lower in silica are preferentially etched. So the, these are etched out of the uh, tectites. So you get these in the Philippines, very rarely in Paracale, commonly, um, well, relatively commonly in uh, the Ando region, and they're still relatively hard to get hold of. Um, you also get these in this type of sculpture in Indochina. You get this on the posterior of Australites. And the um, sculpture that you see very commonly in Central European uh, strewn field in Moldavites. This kind of sculpture. If that was on a Philippine tectite, you'll call that Ander sculpture. Basically exactly the same thing. So that, that basically concludes my introduction to uh, Philippinite sculpture.